this is week three of our short series through the Ten Commandments, right? I'll bring back my picture that I've left sitting over here. My icon, it's not a picture, it's an icon, right, of the Holy Trinity. What's my favorite part of this? The little part here in the bottom, the opening, right? Because God, God is three in one, but God is not complete as three in one. He needs you to fill the gap. He left room. Actually, let me rephrase that. Because I can see some people saying that that's not correct. And that's not correct. God is complete as himself. Three in one. But God leaves room because he wants you to be in a relationship with him. Okay? God needs for you to be in a relationship for him. Not for him, but for you. Because it makes your life complete. Last week we talked about the first tablet, which is the vertical tablet. Right? And this week we're going to talk about the first five out of six or seven on the second tablet, which is the horizontal tablet, which means it talks about our relationship with, with others, those who are sitting around us, right? So last week in the children's sermon, I talked about how the first tablet, the first three commandments give us a, a different perspective or a different way to see things, right? I use the analogy of a, does anybody remember? You played a song, right, before it that was perfect. You remember what the song was? It's actually the hymn of the day today. This is a light of mine. And it was about a nightlight. And this week, I was going to talk to the kids about glasses, right? How many of you wear glasses? And you need those eyewear glasses, whether you know that or not. I have these little pieces of plastic on my eye right now. I won't move it for you to grow you out. Um, and they're actually multifocal, right? I'm old. You're supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> Some of us need glasses in order to see. We need our glasses in order to, for things to be in focus, for stuff to look right so that we can understand what it is, so that we're not walking around with these big blobs around us and tripping over stuff, right? And sometimes you wear glasses to help you see things better. And sometimes different glasses give you different images, right? You go to the eye doctor and she, or she or he says, you know, which one's better, first one, second one? And when you get those new glasses and you finally put them on, you're like, oh my goodness, I can see. It's all about seeing things in a different perspective. So I had some, some different glasses I was going to wear for the kids. <laughs> I can see through these. These are just, they're just plastic, so it's not really that bad, right? So things don't really look that much different to me through these. I look a little different to you, probably, in these glasses, right? <laughs> Yo, what? You can't, you need, is that better? <laughs> well, they won't fit there. So, but glasses sometimes change the way that you see things. I also have another pair of glasses. Um. <laughs> yeah, these shouldn't be a shock for too many people. Glasses are, are something that you look through that change the way that you see things. And sometimes people will say that, some people look through, the, the, the younger generation might not get this, but rose-colored glasses, right? We look through rose-colored glasses and make things look so much better and so much brighter. And things are so perfect when we do that. When we take them off, the, the, the stuff around us about life is, is there again. But if we put on our, our rose-colored glasses, right, everything in life is peachy and everything is great. Well, that's not exactly how it works, and we all know that, especially those of us who have, have lived any amount of time, that life sometimes comes at you and is bad. And sometimes you just have to deal with stuff that happens. But God gives us a way to understand who we are in Him and how we are to live in the world. The question that I would ask you this morning is, what are the rules to freedom? What are the rules to freedom? Are there any? Obey the law? What law? Why, if I'm free, why do I have to obey the law? <laughs> right? 
What are the rules to freedom? We look at the Ten Commandments as things that we have to follow, as rules that we need to do in order to make us have the best life that we can have right here, right now, right? Last week we talked about how the first three commandments tell us how to deal with our relationship with God. That God is our only God. That God is, is not, does not want us to have idols. He doesn't want us to put anything else in front of Him. That He doesn't want us to use His name in vain. And that He wants to, uh, us to honor the Sabbath. Right? He wants us to rest one day a week. And we talked last week about how anything that gets in the way of us seeing God is the only thing that can provide everything for us. Is, the, is, is an idol. So if we take the way that we do things in life, or the way that we should do things in life, or that people do things wrong, or if we take even, I held up the Bible last week and said, even if we take this book and hold it to a stance that we think we're going to get everything out of it, that that then becomes an idol. These are things that get in the way of us. Religion can get in our way of understanding who God calls for us to be. And this week we see the, the first five out of the six or seven from the second tablet, right? Honor your father and mother. Do not steal, do not kill, do not commit adultery, do not bear false witness. It's real easy, right? How many of you can keep those? Just the way they're written. How many of you can keep them? Only Jenny. <laughs> The way that they're written is pretty easy, right? Honor your father and mother. Honor your elders. Listen to them. Do what they ask you to do. Honor your father and mother. Listen to them and do what they ask you to do. <laughs> do not steal. Steal. Do not steal. Do not take anything that doesn't belong to you. Do not kill. And we could spend hours on that one. Is it don't kill or don't Murder, and is there a difference? There absolutely is a difference, but we're not going to get into that this morning. Don't kill any, anybody is the way that we would read that. I'm not going to upset any of the hunters in the room by saying don't kill anything, right? Because we have to manage the animal population in some way, sense, or form. And we need food. So what does that actually mean? See, that's why I said we could talk about that for a really long time. Don't kill anybody. Don't commit adultery. And what is adultery? If, you, if, you, if I say it right with my accent, it's a ban. At least two people got that, so that's good. It's not a sharp tree, I tell the confirmation students. It's a doll tree. Make sure you're awake and listening. Um, it's having relationships that we're not supposed to be having. Right? Do not bear false witness against your neighbors. What does that mean? Don't gossip. Don't gossip. Thank you. Most people say, when you start talking about that, what? Don't, Don't commit perjury. That's, a, that's, a, that's an even bigger word. But yeah, that's right. right. Don't gossip. Don't commit perjury. Most people will say instantly when, when I ask what that commandment means is don't bear false witness. They say don't lie. Right? And I'll tell you what I tell the confirmation students. The Ten Commandments does not include the commandment to not lie. That's later in Leviticus. It's in there. But it's not in the Ten Commandments. It says don't gossip about your friends. Don't tell things that aren't true. Don't be a witness in court to things that then say things something happened that didn't happen or say that something didn't happen that did happen, right? In a sense, it's lying, but it's more than that. Don't do these things. And if we don't do these things, then our life is going to be great, right? Maybe, maybe not. But who are these, these words really for? Are they for me to have a better life? No, they're for you. See, if I do these things to you, then I'm helping you have a really good life. I'm not taking any of your stuff. I'm not, I'm not talking bad about you. I'm not killing you. I'm not, I'm not doing things with you I shouldn't be doing with you. Right? It's not about my life. These commandments were given to the Israelites and to us so that we can love other people and know how God wants us to love other people. 
You see, and then if you take it to the stretch point that, that Jesus did, when Jesus said to the, to the Pharisees and asked him, what are the greatest, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the second is like it, which is love your neighbor as yourself. And where is that found? You say it's found in the Gospels, Pastor, because you just said that Jesus said it. But where did Jesus quote it from? This is not something new that Jesus made up. Jesus quoted Leviticus 19, 18, when he said, love your neighbor as yourself. This is what the Israelites were told to do. This is what the Israelites were commanded to do through the Ten Commandments. You see, it's not about me following the Ten Commandments so that my life is perfect. It's about me looking at the Ten Commandments and, and not giving to somebody else any crap or taking from somebody else anything that is theirs or doing anything to anybody else that's going to cause them to fall away from God. It's about us living in a way that shows love to everybody that we come in contact with. It's about us understanding that our relationship with God is already set and secured, that he called us out of Egypt, that he made us to be his people, and that relationship is already set. And if we can follow these things and live in him and through him, Using his name correctly, not having any other idols and having him first in our life and then having our neighbor second in our lives and loving them the way that he loved us, accepting them where they're at and helping them move forward in, in where God is calling them to be. Then we are going to be his most precious gift, his most perfect people living out his love in this world. And is that easy? No. No. That's why God helps us by giving us these ten words to understand who we can be in Him. It's about God giving us a light to shine in the darkness so we don't stub our toes or know that things aren't there that we think may be there or giving us a pair of glasses so that we can see the world in a different way and understand that it's not about me being perfect in this world. But it's about me understanding how God accepted me where I was. And me accepting others where they are. And showing them the love that God has given to me. And the love that God wants to give to them. So live these words not so that you can have the perfect life. But so that you can help your neighbor have a better life. And know how much God loves them.